just share my perspective and somebody can understand, then that's the that's the entire point. I'm not trying to change anyone's mind. Right. Right. You know, if that happens then great, you know, but I'm not, I'm my, my goal is not to bring you over to my side. It's just to explain to you why I'm on this side, you right. know, and why I feel the way that I feel and how I came to this point. And Gypsy, this is for you because I want you to know that I know for a fact. Ken's car the last week and a half only been at your house two times for a very short period of time when he was staying at your house and his car was always there up until then. What happened? Oh, honey, I am so not threatened by you. My man wouldn't touch you with a 10 foot pole. You're just mad because I have a Chad. And last time I checked, you don't have a man. What happened the last week and a half? That Oscar video. So now you know I know for a fact. Okay? So you can lie to all these people on the internet, Bookie, but I know. Oscar, listen, baby, I know I was a bad girl, but come on, you'd have to be crazy not to take me back. Ben left Gypsy because he was tired of dealing with all of her drama and constantly defending her and her constantly embarrassing them. And like I've been telling you guys, this woman is a completely different person behind closed doors. So I know that this man was dealing with a lot more crazy than we even know about. I just knew the moment that Gypsy deleted everything online and told everybody that she was gonna stay off social media, that it was because they broke up and she did not want this to go public. And those of us who are perceptive saw this coming from a mile away because we could see every time Ken was on camera, how miserable he looked with Gypsy. We just had wrapped up filming with the previous season of our show he has a tv show he has major social media following now he doesn't need to rely on anyone's social media to have a voice and so i think that given the right time the right space the the right opportunities that come his way to share his story of how we met how our relationship is going all of those details that he wants to share with people and, and in a sense show them the light or the truth, he will be able to. Right now it's just a complicated space and time and area right now. <laughs> There's like random stuff in this room. Thank you, Judy. The relationship between Ken Acker and Gypsy Rose Blanchard appears to have reached a breaking point, with mounting evidence suggesting the two have parted ways. What's more? Ken's behavior at Gypsy's baby shower seemed not only distant but outright humiliating for her and her family. Observers noted that his disinterest, detachment and lack of emotional investment during the event fueling rumors that the relationship is over. Here's how it all unfolded and why this baby shower revealed more than just the cracks in their relationship. It solidified them. Let's talk about the baby shower. This was supposed to be one of the biggest moments for Gypsy, a time for her and Ken to show the world that they are excited about their new baby and united as a couple. But honestly, it was nothing like that. Ken barely looked like he wanted to be there. The guy was checked out, plain and simple. I want you all to really think about this for a second. She sat there at her baby shower, right? And she watched people eat her baby. How disturbing is that? She sat there and watched people lick and drool all over her baby's face. I can't. I mean, who does that? So, I can't even. It's so disturbing. If you look at the photos and videos, it's obvious he wasn't invested. He wasn't sitting close to Gypsy, wasn't interacting with her in a loving way. And honestly, he just seemed like he was counting the minutes until he could leave. This wasn't just awkward energy. It was humiliating for Gypsy. Imagine being surrounded by your family and friends, celebrating the arrival of your child, and the person who's supposed to be your partner is acting like a stranger. Ken's body language screamed, I am only here because I have to be. That's not what you expect from a father to be, especially not at such an important event. He might as well have worn a sign that said, I am done. Now let's talk about the setup. The decorations were just weird. There was no thought, no effort, no energy put into making this event special. The backdrop? It looked like someone grabbed a couple of pillows and a random bed sheet and threw it together at the last second. It didn't even cover the TV in the background. Guys, I can't even. I mean, what? Did Lifetime not cut a check for another party? That was absolutely the poorest excuse for a baby shower I've ever seen. 
I mean, the dollar store, dude, the dollar store. You could have just went there and did better than that whole circus you put on. I mean, the backdrop, guys, two pillows and a bed sheet for the backdrop. That looks like the sheet you consummated your affair on. Hanging in the back with the pillows didn't even cover the television. <laughs> Don't even get me started on the buffet. The slop is served, people. And the dress. What was she wearing? That dress looked like a doily that was on my great aunt's coffee table. In fact, it looked like a piece of the backdrop that she used and just threw it together and made a dress. Here she is, acting like some kind of celebrity, and then she goes and puts a party on like that. Yeah, a celebrity you are not. Just saying, there's that. For a baby shower that's supposed to celebrate a new life, it looked more like something you would see at a rushed college dorm party. Compare this to their gender reveal party, where everything felt big, planned, and happy. Ken was involved, Gypsy looked radiant, and it actually gave off the vibe of two people excited about their future. This baby shower felt the opposite. No love, no effort, no unity. It's like the decorations themselves were reflecting how disconnected things are between them. And don't get me started on Ken's attitude. The guy was particularly sulking the entire time. He wasn't smiling, wasn't interacting with the guests, and definitely wasn't supporting Gypsy the way you'd expect a partner to. It was like he was there out of obligation and nothing more. Honestly, it felt like he was sending a message, whether he meant it or not. All of this, Ken's attitude, the weird setup, and the lack of connection just screams that they are not on good terms. You can't fake love or excitement, especially not on an event like this. Ken's behavior wasn't just awkward. It was downright embarrassing for Gypsy. If they're still together, they're hanging on by a thread. But let's be real. This baby shower was a public confirmation that they are done. So many people have been talking about the relationship between Gypsy Rose and Ken. You know, are they going to make it? Is Ken looking happy? Are the, is there fights going on between the two of them? Like, you know, what's going on? Um, and this is my take on that. Um, I do not believe that their relationship is going to make it. And I'm going to tell you why. A solid, honest relationship needs to be based on just that. Honesty trust you need to be able to trust your partner however the relationship between gypsy and ken is all based on dishonesty cheating lies all of it and so a relationship is not going to make it when you base it off of all of that their relation relationship started under a lie in a cheating situation this brings us to the claims made by Nina, which have sparked significant discussions. Nina is known for her accurate reporting, and her reputation for providing truthful information adds weight to her statements. She revealed that Ken and Gypsy have allegedly parted ways and that this development has been filmed by Lifetime as part of their ongoing series. For all of the people that are saying I'm wrong and Gypsy is still with Ken, just save this video and come back and apologize and tell me I'm queen when you see I'm right. And Gypsy, this is for you because I want you to know that I know for a fact. Ken's car the last week and a half only been at your house two times for a very short period of time. When he was staying at your house and his car was always there up until then. What happened the last week and a half? That Oscar video. So now you know I know for a fact. Okay? So you can lie to all these people on the internet, Bookie, but I know. Check that. Like I said, save this video and come back and tell me I'm queen. And bow down. Also, if y'all think Julie recap is accurate, y'all have to be silly. Because she was the same one that was saying Gypsy and Ryan were perfect and their relationship was great and we were silly. And then a week later, we found out that Gypsy left Ryan. So how credible is she, really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just save this video and come back and tell me I'm queen. It's crucial to understand that Nina's sources are likely under NDA's non-disclosure agreements, especially since they are linked to Gypsy's team or the production company. This means they are allegedly bound not to reveal sensitive information publicly. Because of these contractual obligations, neither Ken, Gypsy, nor their family can openly confirm or deny the separation at this time. Any official statement could breach their agreement with Lifetime which has exclusive rights to document and disclose these events. This aligns with why Gypsy and Ken have remained silent and denied rumors. They are likely preserving the narrative that Lifetime intends to present. Additionally, 
The fact that this information was leaked in the first place indicates that someone close to the production or the couple had insider knowledge. Nina's revelation about the filming adds credibility. As this isn't random speculation, the claim that Christie, possibly a family member or insider, is upset also ties into this narrative. It's hard to believe that all these details, filming, insider frustrations and relationship troubles are mere fabrications. Nina's accuracy in reporting past events only strengthens the likelihood that this information is accurate. It's important to consider that Lifetime might even be orchestrating or amplifying some of this drama for the show's storyline. Their trips to Disney, the Golden Gate Bridge, and other publicized activities likely planned and recorded meticulously for the maximum effect. The portrayal of a dramatic split or relationship troubles would undoubtedly attract more viewers. The baby shower was supposed to be a significant milestone for Gypsy and Ken, yet everything about the event felt hollow and staged, raising serious questions about their relationship. Starting with the invitations, they referred to the event as Gypsy and Ken's baby shower, seemingly a joint celebration. But then why did the signage at the event itself simply say Gypsy's baby shower? Was this an oversight or was it a subtle way of signaling that Ken wasn't truly part of the day or their future? Take a look at this sign, this last minute sign that was made. What does it tell you? Gypsy's baby shower, right? Not Gypsy and Ken's. Gypsy's. And I just know people are gonna say that the baby showers are usually for the pregnant woman. Ken's presence was even more puzzling. Why was he so emotionally checked out? Guests and viewers noticed his complete lack of enthusiasm. He wasn't interacting with Gypsy or her family in a meaningful way. Nor was he participating in the event with any sense of joy. Was he there because he wanted to be? Or was his attendance purely contractual? given that lifetime was filming the entire event take a closer look at the way she words her posts she frequently says things like me and my baby avoiding terms like our baby our family and left gypsy because he was tired of dealing with all of her drama and constantly defending her and her constantly embarrassing them and like i've been telling you guys this woman is a completely different person behind closed doors so i know that this man was dealing with a lot more crazy than we even know about i just knew the moment that gypsy deleted everything online and told everybody that she was going to stay off social media that it was because they broke up and she did not want this to go public and those of us who are perceptive saw this coming from a mile away because we could see every time ken was on camera how miserable he looked with gypsy and this really explains why she gave him that promise ring at nobu because she felt ken pulling away Way, and she was trying so hard to trap this man and like I said months ago pregnancy and marriage will not trap him this also just confirms that Ken was only in it for the money and fame like I said because this man already broke up with Gypsy and only got back together with her once she was rich and famous and no longer in prison but I knew that Gypsy's crazy would be way too much for him to handle and he could only do it for so long and I have a feeling once that baby's born she is going to absolutely lose her mind because I truly believe that Gypsy got pregnant for all of the wrong reasons because I truly believe that Gypsy got pregnant for all of the wrong reasons and now she has a whole human that she needs to care for as a single mother and I don't think she's going to handle it well. This subtle shift in language speaks volumes. If Ken were still a central figure in her life, wouldn't he naturally be included in these updates? Why is she framing this as a solo journey instead of a shared one? And then there's the infamous TikTok unfollow refollow incident. Gypsy briefly unfollowed Ken only to refollow him shortly afterward. Was this a moment of frustration where she acted impulsively? Or was it a deliberate message? Did she refollow him because she realized the public would notice and she didn't want to fuel rumors? Hi, I'm Ash Trippy, and I'm the person that actually got Ken's first account banned. So I do know the first account was banned. However, he did get another account and that's the one they had been going live on, like the last live they had did uh, where they were eating cookies and like watching TV and stuff. That account's still up, but you can't see who he's following. You could see his followers and and as far as I was able to tell, Gypsy was still on there. Now over on IG, they are still following each other because right when somebody said something, I went over there because I'm not blocked over there. But Gypsy has me blocked over here, so I can't confirm nor deny that on her end. But I did check out Ken's profile and Ken's profile still seems to be there. Um, if you guys, if she is allowing you to see her following list or her who she's following and he's not there, it may be a TikTok glitch. Honestly, it's probably nothing. But I do know a lot of people are getting the vibes that they're probably not together anymore, but we'll see. I mean, time tells everything, right? 
either way it's clear that their relationship is anything but subtle let's not forget how gypsy's earlier social media post celebrated her relationship with ken back then she often included him in milestones and updates presenting a united front to the world so why the sudden change why has ken disappeared from her posts altogether could it be that their relationship is over and she's solely transitioning to a new narrative one where she's a single mother gypsy's announcement that she's stepping back from the public social media platform adds another layer of intrigue she's claimed this decision was for her mental health and to focus on her baby but is there more to it is she trying to avoid questions about Ken. Is this her way of quietly moving forward without having to explain the breakup? It was left on her dramatic exiting post yesterday where she claims she is leaving TikTok for her mental health. Someone commented, I suspect she was never pregnant. Gypsy replies, say and think what you want. Me and my baby are going to have a happy life away from you trolls and that's more than a win for me. Me and my baby, not we, not Ken, I and our baby, not my family, but me and my baby. Then it's followed up by this gem. Somebody says, where is Ken? And somebody replies, he's gone. It's the talk of the town. Look at what we know. So they've been in couples counseling since the beginning of her pregnancy. This is per Gypsy. They had a huge fight on Halloween. Guys, that's why she wasn't dressed up. Then we have the Ryan video where she's stating that you'd be a fool not to take me back that video. Gypsy has unfollowed Ken, then refollowed him recently. Ken is feeling the pressure from Gypsy to propose and he won't. Rod doesn't like Ken. Ken is sick of all the negative attention that comes with one Miss Gypsy Rose. The baby moan, am I wrong? Or she posted just pictures of the place, right? There were no pictures of them, like there. Remember that video also of her? It was when she was folding the laundry. I think it was the night of the spaghetti when she made spaghetti, where she was talking about she wants Ken to stay with her for her because he loves her, not because of the baby, not just because of that. And I believe she touched on that again in the V-File. So this is a concern of hers. So it's very possible. What are your thoughts? When you piece it all together, the signs are clear. The absence of Ken in her posts, her shifting tone, and her focus on independence all hint at one thing. Gypsy has already accepted that Ken is out of the picture. Whether she's consciously signaling it or not, her social media is telling the story of a woman preparing to move on alone. Let's talk about Gypsy's social media presence because if you've been following her, you've probably noticed the shift. This shift comes right after as rumors about her separation are heating up. And Ken's behavior at the baby shower only backs up those rumors. So when you put it all together, her language, her focus, and her absence of Ken, it's not hard to see what's happening. Gypsy is preparing for a future where Ken isn't in the picture. Her social media is her way of telling the world without actually saying the words that they are done. Now let's get into the weirdness with Ken's dog. On the same day as the baby shower, the same day, his dog went missing. Yeah, so apparently Ken lost his dog and he posted on Facebook, lost pets. I'm not saying anything directly, okay? All I'm saying is he might want to drive over to cut off Louisiana and check, check Gypsy's yard. It's pretty convenient that they're broken up and his dog is missing. But she wouldn't do that. She would not do that, y'all. She has a lot of respect for pets. She doesn't... Oh, Pixie. Besides Pixie... But there's no way she's capable of something like that because it's not like she's a mur I don't know. <laughs> what are the odds of that? Some people might brush it off as just a bad timing. But come on, this feels more symbolic of the whole situation. Instead of being fully present for what should have been a huge milestone, Ken's attention was split. His focus wasn't on Gypsy, the baby, or even the event. It was on finding his dog. And while sure, losing a pet is stressful, the timing here is what makes it stand out. It's like a perfect metaphor for how detached Ken has been from the relationship. Even on a day that was supposed to be about celebrating their future, he couldn't give Gypsy or the baby his full attention. And let's not forget, he didn't exactly look thrilled to be at the baby shower in the first place. The missing dog just added to the chaos surrounding him, showing once again that his priorities are all over the place. It's like he's already checked out, both emotionally and physically. This incident might seem small, but it's just another piece of evidence that Ken isn't fully invested anymore. If you've seen the photos or videos from the baby shower, you already know what I'm talking about. 
Ken wasn't just quiet. He was absent in every way that mattered. No smiles, no loving looks, no effort to connect with Gypsy or even pretend he was excited about the baby. He sat there like he was being forced to attend and honestly, it was hard to watch. He is the thing. A man who's invested in his relationship doesn't act like that, even if there is tension behind the scenes. He would have at least made an effort for Gypsy's sake, but Ken, he couldn't even fake it. His cold demeanor wasn't just awkward, it was downright humiliating for Gypsy. Imagine inviting your friends and family to celebrate, only for your partner to act like he'd rather be elsewhere. And that's not just disengagement, that's a clear signal that he's done. For Ken to act this way in public, at such a significant event, speaks volumes. Whatever connection they once had, it's gone now. His behavior was more than disinterest, it was a message, and that message was loud and clear. This relationship is over. Remember the gender reveal? Back then, it looked like Ken and Gypsy were on the same page. They were holding hands, smiling, and genuinely seemed excited about their future together. Fast forward to the baby shower, and it's like we're looking at two completely different people. At the gender reveal, there was energy, love, and a sense of partnership. But at the baby shower, none of that was there. Ken sat distant, barely engaging with Gypsy on the event. It's almost like he was counting down the minutes until he could leave. The baby shower wasn't a celebration. It was the public unraveling of a relationship built on shaky ground, amplified by public scrutiny and internal conflict. Ken's actions didn't just embarrass Gypsy. They exposed the truth behind the facade.